Hey, Buck Risby here. This is episode three of Ultimate Lifespan. I'm your host, Buck Risby. I'm the founder of Organica Research, and I'm really excited to be here. So the topic of today's episode, this is not scripted. I don't have a, any kind of teleprompter behind you, so we're hopefully do, going to do this in just one take. But the topic is uh, extending your life. Obviously, we're here talking about Ultimate Lifespan. This is living longer, feeling younger, being passionate about what you're doing. And uh, one of the ingredients that has gotten a lot of press lately is something called resveratrol. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it, what it can do for you, and how you can get natural versions, uh, uh, in intake resveratrol naturally. So first, what is it? It's a, it's a small molecule. It's produced by certain plants as a response to stress. And uh, one of the key plants that we hear, hear probably a lot about is uh, how resveratrol is in red wine, which means that it's actually in the grapes that are uh, squeezed and, and used to produce wine. Now, studies have shown that resveratrol can extend the lives of very simple organisms like yeast, flies, fish, but more recently it's been shown by a Harvard Medical School study to uh, extend the life of mice. In fact, uh, when they applied this to mice that were overweight or obese, in this case they were obese, it reduced the risk of them dying by 31 percent. Now that's pretty exciting, but the other side of that was that the mice on resveratrol lived as long and were as healthy as the mice that were on a standard diet and that were actually lean. So if you can imagine someone that is obese, overweight, on a high calorie diet, being able to live as long, not have to worry about the risk of diabetes, heart disease, and other diseases that are associated with being overweight, that's pretty astounding. Now, this is only applicable to mice, and the study only uh, was not applied to humans. So I'm sharing you with you the results of the study. They believe that mice, because they're um, genetically closer to us than any of the other organisms that have been tested with resveratrol, that this may be applicable to humans. So let me share you the re with you the rest of the results of that study. Uh, number one, the aged mice, they were fed a high calorie diet, uh, and then uh, there was a set that were given a high calorie diet, and then a set that were given a high calorie diet plus resveratrol, and then there was a third set that was given a standard diet. The mice that were not on resveratrol but, but had the high calorie diet, they had many of the markers that you would associate with uh, diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and, and many of the other diseases associated with obesity. So that was uh, not surprising because we see that a lot in humans as well. But this was astounding. Um, they went and examined the livers of the untreated mice. I'm talking about the mice that were on the high calorie diet, no resveratrol and they were twice the normal size of the, of the mice on the standard diet, uh, as well as the mice that were on the high calorie diet plus resveratrol. And what that means is that the livers were fatty, they were not as efficient at uh, doing their work, and obviously that's, uh, that's a very bad thing, because the livers, obviously we cannot live without the, the, uh, the liver organ. Um, the ge they, they genetically tested the mice across the board, and the mice that were on resveratrol exhibited many of the benefits of what would normally be seen with a calorie restricted diet. And uh, you might have heard of some of the research where people on calorie restriction live longer, but not many of us wanna, are very excited about being on a calorie restricted diet. So, uh, but the other big thing was that most of the negative effects of, that are associated with being on a high fat, high calorie diet were prevented by being on resveratrol. And that was a specific quote by one of the researchers doing this as part of the Harvard Medical School study. And um, this is the big one. I think this is the bonus benefit, other than the disease issues that we talked about, was the quality of life. They actually tested the motor skills of the mice, and they found that the mice on the resveratrol, on the resveratrol these were overweight, overweight mice on a high calorie diet, but they took the resveratrol and they found that they were performing better on motor skills tests than the mice that were on high calorie diet, no resveratrol. In fact, they had a very similar motor skills profile as to the mice that were on standard diet that were lean. So uh, obviously this is not you know, something that you can make up. You can go and, and check these facts for yourself. I've got a copy of, you can see the, hopefully the logo here, the Harvard, Harvard uh, Medical School. It says Harvard Medical School Office of Public Affairs. This is their press release 
where they say small molecule increases lifespan and health span of obese mice. So the data is there about this. It's got a picture of three of the overweight mice that were um, part of that study. And uh, the National Institutes of Health also picked this up. This is part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services put, a, put out a press release about the same time. So um, very, very exciting news. What does this mean to you and how can you take advantage of it? Where well. There are ways that you can get resveratrol into your system naturally. And um, people have talked about something called the French paradox, where uh, French people seem to be able to stave off or not have a lot of the heart disease and diabetes issues and uh, some of the other uh, health issues associated with being overweight or being on a high fat diet, even though they do eat uh, typically a high fat diet, they smoke more, they drink more. And uh, they attribute that, they think, to the fact that uh, French people on a per capita basis drink more red wine than, say, Americans or other Westerners. So I wanted to do some homework, and I did some homework to figure out, okay, well, if red wine is the key, then what kind of red wine would be the best for us to consume that would give us the most uh, type, uh, most resveratrol? And so there's a gentleman by the name of Leroy Creasy who studied hundreds of wines. He was a Cornell researcher. And uh, he found two regions in the United States specifically that produced a, uh, a type of wine, specifically a Pinot Noir, that had the highest levels of resveratrol. The one, one region was the uh, Finger Lakes region of upstate New York, and the other was the uh, Willamette, Valley, Willamette Valley of Oregon. Now, I, um, as I mentioned to you, I had a chance, and you saw the, that interview that I did with Gary Vaynerchuk, um, off camera, I might have gotten them on camera too, so if, I, if I'm able to pull that, that, uh, that little snippet. Um, I asked him, what, what were the best wines, uh, what's the best Pinot Noir that you could find either in the uh, Finger Lakes region of New York or Willamette Valley? He thought that the Pinots coming out of Finger Lakes were not so hot as of recent years, and he recommended the Oregon wines. So I walked into my local uh, Whole Foods and grabbed a bottle of uh, Pinot Noir. In this case, this is a 2007 Willamette Valley Pinot Noir called Edelsheim. So I'm not going to crack this open and do the taste testing like Gary does, but I just wanted to show you an example of a wine that um, if you're looking to get your Pinot Noir, if you're looking to get your resveratrol, excuse me, uh, naturally, then a Pinot Noir grape wine, a Pinot, Pinot Noir wine is your best bet. And if you want to have the highest levels of resveratrol for Pinot then, and, and have the wine be a good wine, then head on over to the rack and grab the ones from the Willamette, Willamette Valley in, New, in Oregon. Now, I looked. Some of them may not say Willamette Valley. This one, uh, I noticed another wine said Newburgh, Oregon. So Newburgh is also in the Willamette Valley. So that's a good way to get your resveratrol. Obviously, you're going to have to consume... Uh, a bit of red, red wine to make sure you keep your resveratrol levels up. And, uh, you know, for some people who are concerned about calories or concerned about just drinking alcohol in general, um, this may not be the best bet. But if red wine is your thing, and I, I do enjoy, enjoy a, a glass of red wine from time to time, thing you should know if you're worried about calories, a five ounce glass of red wine has about 121 calories. So you want to keep that in mind. That's for me. If I'm spending some time on the bike, it's probably 20 minutes on the bike to burn off the calories, at least my personal trainer tells me that. So um, check that out. I'm not, I don't have any affiliation with Edelsheim. I just picked this up from uh, Whole Foods. I have no affiliation with Whole Foods. So if you, uh, but there are other wines certainly available from Willamette Valley that are very good and uh, Pinot Noir. And um, that's what I wanted to cover today in today's episode of Ultimate Lifespan. I've got a question for you. I'd like to know, I'd like to hear from you, and I want to know what's your number one, what's the number one topic you'd like to hear covered on Ultimate Lifespan? Go ahead and, and scroll down and put that comment right here into the blog, and I'd like to cover that in a future edition of Ultimate Lifespan. I want to hear back from you. This is Buck Risby signing out from Ultimate Lifespan. May your life be ultimate. I'll see you next time.